Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. We can't let anybody else find out who we are. My eyes are up here. I personally would not advise that strategy. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bugs Bunny or Tweety Bird? How to make money in crypto. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the people's channel, home of the BitSquad, the largest and greatest crypto community in all the interwebs. No channel works harder. Keep you in the know about crypto. Welcome to the show. My name is Ben. Can somebody get my uh, clock back up that fell oh, yesterday? Yeah, I knocked it I over. How do I know what day it is? I don't know what time it is. How do I know what the temperature is in here? Like, I definitely need that up there. Well, I can tell but you. The show's going to be a disaster. It's June 1st. It's June 1st, okay. We're a little late, 1140. 11.40? Can't tell you. We come to you live every day at 11.40 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 11.38, according to my... 11.39, according to my clock. Uh, today is Wednesday, June 1st. 73 degrees here in the BitBoy Crypto Studio. Um, yeah, so sorry we're late. We are working on some technical stuff uh, to make the show better. And, um, you know, it, it is what it is, which is fine because I actually need some time anyways to set some more stuff up. Uh, you know, today is the 1st of June, which means that uh, it's time to give away our YouTube money. Oh, um, hey. Yeah. Okay, so we have a doc. Uh, you want to show that first? Or just at some point. Yeah, we'll do it. Before Let, we get into the news too much. Yeah, let's, let's do it uh, in between uh, the Market Watch and Frank coming on. Okay, perfect. Okay. So we've got a little documentary to show you guys here. Uh, documentary trailer that we took part in. Uh, so we're going to show you guys that. Uh, we also have a contest that we're running. So we've got a lot of housekeeping stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it first. You guys check out uh, me on Twitter. You go to BitBoy Crypto. I need to pin this tweet also. Let me pin this here. Pin to I like profile. the Mickey Mouse hand. The what? The Mickey Mouse cursor. Oh, you like the big cursor. I mean, yeah. I, people need to see the cursor. You know, it is what it is. Got a little margin on the right, too. Yeah, so what we are... Oh, gosh. What a nightmare. What a nightmare. There you go. Uh, we are giving away five sets of passes to Consensus. We are actually... I'm going to be at Consensus, uh, you know, I, barely. But I will be there... All day on Friday. Uh, I'll be there in the evening on Thursday. Uh, going to be hooking up with Charles Hoskinson to do an interview. It's really the only reason I'm going, but, you know, hey, good to see you guys while I'm out there if you are going to be attending that. And if you want to attend it, you don't have uh, a pass. Well, we have five sets of passes to give away. All you got to do is go to my pin tweet here on Twitter. Best place to put a pin tweet. And uh, you guys will just click the Gleam link. Go sign up. Follow me on Twitter. Make sure that you are, uh, you know, re you retweet this tweet as part of the contest, and you'll get all set up, and maybe you can go. So, as I'm eating more vegetables, that is false. That is false. <laughs> I do not eat vegetables. That never happens. That'll never happen. So, uh, we got that going on. And then we also, uh, like I said, let's give away our uh, YouTube's money. Give me just one second here, TJ. Sure. Where? Let me, I want to see what the uh, amount is for this month real quick. So, you guys will know that let's go to analytics here click the revenues click the revenues oh well it's not giving me nothing's happening that's fine that's really really great thanks youtube there it was there okay uh so for the last 28 days let's see we're looking up for may yeah for may uh 52,669 was our uh revenue for this month uh so we give away 75 percent of that we keep 25 percent for taxes so Works out to probably about thirty-six thousand dollars we're going to be giving away uh, this month. Uh, shout out to Ben TJ and the Bit Squad, of course. Frankie Candles, Candle Mafia, Tony D. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate that for the super chat. Also saw someone said that um, they are going to be. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Was Did you see that comment, TJ? Please talk about your cricket game with crypto banter. I thought I have no idea what that's in reference to. I've definitely never played. TJ's cricket. terrible at cricket. I'll yeah. crush him. Uh, no, the, there was another super chat. I remember it said, uh, to do a deep dive, what is blockchain video? We are doing a Crypto 101. Um, we are doing a Crypto 101 video, and uh, that'll be coming out. Uh, I'm going to be gone quite a bit in June, just so you guys are aware. Uh, we'll have a lot of different arrangements for what's going to be happening while I'm gone. But, uh, you know, that will be one of them is a deep dive Crypto 101 video, which will include what is blockchain, I'm sure. Uh, somebody said they tried to enter, but it did not work. Hmm, that's weird. Uh, we'll look into that. So let's go ahead and give away our, our Pluto Alliance money. Just a reminder, here's what we do. Every single month for our Pluto Alliance holders, uh, we give away all of our YouTube profits to one nation in Pluto Alliance. Now, as you guys know, we move 
we remove as we go. But on the fourth month, which is this month, uh, we're we're re-entering everyone. So even the black hole, even the Pluto, even Uranus, those were the three that got picked so far. Those will be uh, re-entered for this month and then removed again next month. So we have 10 alien nations over a 12-month period. Everyone will win at least once. Two are going to potentially win twice. So success for that. Uh, so let's go ahead and do it. The way we do this is we roll a dice with random.org. So we roll a dice and the number is six. You guys can count it there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what we're going to do here is we are going to take the list of alien nations, always including Uranus, and we're going to randomize it six times. So here we go. One, and the one at number one will be the winner. Two, three, four, five, and six. The black holes. Look at that. Jeez. Black hole getting all the money again. Uh, now, a reminder, you guys do need to uh, stake Pluto Alliance NFTs on the staking side. That can be done if you go to the Pluto Alliance Discord. Uh, to to uh, basically stake that. The reason why we do that is we only want people that are active in the community to win. We don't want someone to, that bought a Pluto Alliance NFT and doesn't pay attention to it, doesn't pay attention to the community. Uh, they don't even know we're doing this. Uh, those people are eliminated. So only the people that are active in the community are the ones who are getting the money. Nobody else does this. No, nobody else does this. I, I don't know of another single uh, you know, NFT platform that's giving you, or NFT that's giving you the kind of utility kind of money that we are with this. It's all voluntary, not coded in. Uh, this is something we decided to do much after the launch just to pay the community back. Just let you guys know we appreciate you. We love you and we see it. So uh, there we go. Uh, I guess that's uh, all of our housekeeping items here at the beginning of the show. A lot of housekeeping today. A little bit. A little bit. But let's go ahead and get started looking at the numbers of what's happening today in crypto. Uh, number of crypto, 19,670. Market cap, $1.3 trillion. Volume up a little bit at $97 billion. Also, guys, make sure to smash likes if you love when we give stuff away. Doing a massive giveaway for consensus passes. We're also doing giving away the YouTube money every month. Uh, really, nobody can touch what we do giving back to our community. Uh, and if you like that, if you like being a member of the Bit Squad, make sure to smash that like button. Number one thing you can do to show your appreciation and show that you're a member of the Bit Squad. Uh, okay, guys, Bitcoin dominance coming in at... Uh, no, I've not watched Top Gun. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm 0% interested in watching Top Gun. Because? I am just a little bit too young, like one or two years, for Top Gun to have been a big deal to me mm -hmm. as a kid. Uh, so I'm just, I'm not a Tom Cruise fan. And I I, I don't know. I, wh wh where do you fall, TJ? Uh, I didn't even know it was a thing, to be honest, until this weekend. But I it's, heard it's really good, though. People well, are saying it's fantastic. Like, yeah. it's a great action movie. Robert, my brother-in-law, big, huge fan. And it's funny you said you're just... Happy I birthday, think, Nadine. I think there's like a two-year age difference between you and him. He's a couple of years older. Who is it? Robert. Robert yeah, Bennett. exactly. And it's right yep. there in that range you're talking about where it was huge for him. So he was going back and seeing it, and he was going to go back and see it with his dad, too. Uh, you know, my parents yeah, both I've heard wanted you, to see it. I was talking to Dean this morning. He said he's going to see it twice. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people. So, But for me, eh, not really. Not a Tom Cruise fan hater. I, I don't think it's abnormal to not be a Tom Cruise fan. I don't know. Call me yeah. crazy. These days. Uh, so, okay. Uh, 31 Paraguay sent an ETH transaction. Uh, ETH is staying at 18.1 while Bitcoin dominance is rising, which is quite interesting. What was the BTC peak before? Do you remember dominance? For was the last cycle? Last cycle. Uh, I think it was 70. 70. Oh, I, I believe it was right at 70. Um, the, the maxis we're talking about, it was going to 80. Uh, mm. Let's see what it, what it totaled at here. Um, in the last cycle, it would have been... 70.37% hit it dead on. Hey, mm -hmm. guys, that's a, that's a good memory right there, folks. Yeah. Right at 70%. Uh, and then it actually, it got to 71.89% January of last year as the price was pumping, actually. Hmm. That's very interesting. I didn't that realize that had happened. It actually pierced that when Bitcoin went from, you know, 19,000 all the way up to 42,000 in just a few weeks. Uh, during that time, you know, Bitcoin dominance saw a, a renaissance, if you will. But in the bear cycle, it peaked out right at 70%. Um, and then, you know, that was kind of resistance level and it never got above that again. It stayed, you know, steadily pretty much on a decline outside of that one outlier when Bitcoin was really, really, really pumping. Um, and that was a time we were, you know, we were mostly in Bitcoin at that time too. You know, I mean, that that's something that we were doing. Uh, still sacking ETH at the time, but, Definitely uh, trending down if you're looking at it over time. 
Oh, for sure. I mean, I, that should be obvious, right? Like, right. there's more competition. There's better coins out there. There's a lot of, you know, the, the, the altcoin world has to offer. And the more choice there is, while the Bitcoin maximalists don't want you to have a choice, uh, the more people are going to opt to use that. And so I certainly do not think we are going to see Bitcoin dominance approach 70% again. I, the, the number I'm targeting is about 55%. I think 55% could be a number we see. It also could stall out around 50%. And then we see Ethereum dominance rise up to 25%, somewhere around there. I think that's definitely something that we are going to uh, going to see uh, in the future. So Ethereum's sitting at 19-ish, 18-ish? Right now, Ethereum is sitting at 1975. I think, what what did, what, I mean, what did it bottom? Dominant. Oh, dominant at 18.1% right 18. now. 18.1. Uh, 1890, let's look at the month, what, what it bought, or three months, what it bottomed out at. We hit a new low of 1727 uh, on May 27th for the price of Ethereum. So, um, you know, a lot, a lot of people expecting a $1,700 Ethereum. I mean, definitely not out of the range of possibilities. Uh, looking at this, we got Cardano continue to pump um, hey, up 16% for back the day. To even. Is that correct? Back to even on our big buy. Is that? Th there's no way that's right. No, see, it's yeah, that, uh, those are not wah, correct wah, numbers. Wah. We're, start over. We got to start over the whole show, guys. Whole show, we got to start over. Market cap 1.273. <laughs> Bitcoin dominance the 46. It's supposed to be dynamic. It's supposed to update anyway. So, yeah. I, you know, I guess I had to refresh it. You know, who knows? Uh, Bitcoin, ETH dominance has actually dropped from 18.1 to 18%. So uh, sure everybody just forget the last five minutes existed. Yeah. Um, but uh, Bitcoin coming in is now under 31,000. Ethereum is at 18.89. And Cardano has had a pullback. Of course, you expect to pull back back down to 58 cents. Everything dropping last night, pretty much, uh, except for Tron, which seems to be moving counter to the market right now, uh, which is interesting. I mean, Justin Sun making a big marketing push. Uh, biggest gainers of the day, Tron, Waves. Waves continuing to pump, up 74% for the week, still getting crushed overall. Uh, don't get caught up on the seven-day number for something that is down, you know, uh, significantly over the last, uh, you know, couple of months. Because losers for the day, Axie Infinity with quite the retrace, still in the green for the week. Same thing with Cardano. Uh, Thorchain, double red numbers, stepping down massively, all the way down to a dollar. Guys, I, I hope this step in really teaches you guys a lesson here. Okay, you're going to see stuff that it's going to pump in this bear market. You're going to see new coins that pop up that uh, do great. But when the overall downtrend of the market is continuing, you have to take profits. Don't be an idiot. Don't say, oh, look at this step in investment. It's up to $3 now. I'm sure now it's going up to 100 Maybe in a bull market, but not in a bear market. So when you've got anything that moves, that's a new coin, maybe a new investment, you need to take the profits. Look, you got to show green in that portfolio. Yeah. Take the green. Don't let it fall back to the red. I mean, look like what we did with Cardano. You know, we were up $3 million. Now we're back below even because we didn't take any profits. But part of that also with Cardano is we run a node for yeah. Cardano. And so because of that, like, it, it's almost like, you know, we don't want to sell even if it would be beneficial in the short term for us uh, because we have a responsibility with the node that we run to be part of the community. So, um, okay, well, let's go ahead. Before Frank comes up, uh, let's go ahead and show that trailer. You're going to show it on your side? Yep. I okay. should be able to just hit a okay. button here and let's see what we got. This is, uh, <clears throat> apparently this is streaming on Amazon Prime. It was trending at one point for a while. Uh, these guys have done some really cool stuff, and here it is. Check yeah. it out. Oh, well, where'd it go? Now it's not there. Nope. Give me a second. Go ahead, go go ahead and, well, good run. Yeah, it was a good run. Man, show's been awful today. Yeah. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. We we give away a bunch of money, and then uh, I'll find it in just a second. We we tech fail. Go ahead and have uh, Frank do the charts. I'll All right, come on up, Frank. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> what is going on everybody i hope you're having a good wednesday because i now know it's wednesday because i thought it was tuesday that uh that holiday weekend threw me through a loop a little bit uh but i hope you guys are having a good day we got a lot to talk about on the charts um actually took a little uh bitcoin took a little tumble here uh this morning so uh we're gonna take a look at that I actually um alerted the discord uh, we had an interesting formation on the chart, uh, you know, threw it in the Discord, let them know where we thought it was going. And then as I was sending the analysis in the Discord, we actually wicked down and uh, touched our target almost to a T. Um, but we got a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. I mean, I feel like there's lots of talks, like this relief bounce. Like, I, 
I think there's more to come. There has to be, and there's some bullish things popping up on the chart that support that. Um, uh, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a little bit of longer term, some macro things that could indicate that we are finding a bottom here and we could have a nice relief pump uh, up. I'll let you know where I think we're going and then we'll go a little more uh, micro and I'll show you guys kind of the levels I'm watching and uh, kind of my plan to get into some uh, long positions, right? Because now I am in the mode of trying to close out the rest of my shorts. I still have a little bit of my Ethereum trade left in. I'm about 75% out of it. It's still up like 65%, um, but it's a low dollar amount, but uh, I've basically taken all my profit out of there. So uh, looking to close the rest of my shorts, and now we are long hunting. Uh, so let's go ahead, and without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the charts. So we're going to start off uh, on Bitcoin. Now, just some things uh, you know, on the macro that kind of are signaling that we could be finding a, uh, a bottom here. Now, we are printing a green dot currently on the five-day chart. Um, now, this is pretty bullish, in my opinion. You do have the VWAP coming over that zero line. Now, if you come all the way back, um, so you'll see we are printing a green dot here um, on the momentum wave as well as below the momentum wave, right? So that's a little stronger of an indication. And if you come down over to 2017, interestingly enough, the last time we got a green dot down here on the five-day chart was at the bottom in 2018. I think I might have said 2017 before. Technically, this is 2018. Um, so the last time we saw one of these green dots pop up on the five-day chart like this was li literally like almost marked the bottom almost to the candle. Um, so very interesting. Doesn't mean that this is definitely the bottom forever, um, you know, but it is, you know, there's a lot of confluence here. Uh, I'm going to show you some more things as well, uh, but very interesting. This did the last time this happened did almost mark the bottom to the candle uh, in the last cycle. Um, but nonetheless, even if it isn't going to mark the bottom, it is going to be. It is still a bullish sign, right? As long as we confirm it, we still do have about three days and nine hours to confirm it. Um, but if this confirms, this is bullish, right? Uh, and not only do we have the five day printing a green dot, we also have the six day printing a green dot. And if you come back here, last time six day printed a green dot. Uh, you know, was basically the bottom of the dump after we had our little fake out uh, bull market in 2019 that basically marked the bottom of that other than the March 2020 dump, basically marked the bottom there. And then also uh, kind of similar to the five day marked the bottom almost to the candle here in 2018. So some interesting signs popping up on the charts here, guys. Um, now, Again, I, I, I'm not saying this is definitely the bottom. I do think there's probably a decent chance that we could still come down and make a lower low. So keeping an eye out for that. But in the in at least in the short term here, we are seeing some signals that uh, coming up here that are could be signaling that we are approaching a bottom. Six, the six day, we got a big green dot on the six day. Oh yeah, and the five day. Wow. Um, and you also have the weekly uh, your VWAP. Let me just make this a little bit bigger, just so you guys can see. This is the weekly I'm time frame. Love when you do that. Oh hey. <laughs> uh, but uh, VWAP coming up towards that zero line, looking to print a green dot on the weekly, probably coming up in the next week or two here, hopefully, as long as we don't get rejected at that zero line. Uh, some pretty bullish stuff happening on the charts right now. Um, so, uh, you know, that stuff is definitely bullish. You do have your daily money flow looking like it has created, uh, started to form a bottom here and uh, is starting to move up. So also a very good sign. Um, now let's just come down into, uh, you know, zoom into price action a little bit, just so we can kind of see what was happening today. Now, uh, this is the two hour chart. Uh, and we did actually, you know, I don't bring these up a lot. I, I, I don't typically trade patterns. I do look at the patterns, but I usually just use them as confirmation. So, you know, if I, if I'm looking to short and I already have two confirmations and then I see a bearish pattern forming, it just adds a little more confirmation. Not saying you can't trade patterns. You could totally trade patterns. I know people do it all the time. Um, I just, not my thing. Uh, but we did have a diamond pattern here. Now, these are typically reversal patterns. So when it happens against resistance, typically they will break to the downside. And if they happen at support, typically they break to the upside. And uh, this is, I alerted this in the Discord earlier this morning saying, watch out for this diamond pattern. It could be breaking to the downside. And when you take the swing high to the swing low and bring it to the end of the pattern, it does bring you right here. And look at that uh, literally came down almost exactly to the target. Um, and then a little confirmation here, we did print the blood diamond on the two hour. Now this is worth noting as well, this blood diamond on the two hour could possibly, if it confirms, uh, continue to bring us down a little bit more. But right now, what I'm watching are these levels. Uh, I was waiting for us to come down and hit this red box. Now this is, 
an important level for a couple of reasons. It was previous resistance. It is also a value area high when you pull some volume uh, from the previous range that we traveled. We were uh, kind of just ranging in for the past 15 days. Um, so it is the value area high. Long, you know, just to sum that up real quick, guys, it, it acts as resistance when you're below it and acts as support when you're above it. Um, so if we lose this level, um, I think we will, we are at least bouncing off of it. But if we lose this level, I will expect a move down further towards this point of control area down here. Um, and this is coming out uh, price wise to about 29 uh, 250. Um, so I will be looking in this range between the point of control and this macro golden pocket if we lose this level up here. Yeah, and you can see looking at that too, that that 29 level is where there's a lot of volume there supporting. That's what that chart there is on the left-hand side for people at home? Yeah, exactly. All this is, is um, this tool allows you to uh, drag volume between a certain range. So I went from about here, which is about the 11th of May, to the current price, um, and you drag it, and it pulls the volume for just that range, right? Yeah. And then this red line coming out of the uh, volume candle right here is called the point of control. And all that is is basically uh, the highest number, the highest volume was traded at that price. So it gives you a nice red line uh, because it's a very strong area of support and resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so, something I noticed uh, both Daniel and Coach Mike from Chart Champions use a decent amount as far as, like you said, confirmation at different levels and that sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And the fact that you can just drag it over the uh, time frame that you're just looking, you just, you would just say you just want to analyze one little uh, week of price action, the volume, you can just pull it right there. Um, it works. This is like a cheat sheet for trading. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to learn how to use it, I have made a video on uh, the Frankie Candles YouTube channel. You guys can go check that out. I show you how to use it, how to trade with it. Um, but real quick, before I hop out of here, um, I do just want to bring up a uh, shout out. I forget who said it in my stream last night. Um, but if you pull up the USDT dominance, um, why is it not coming up? I keep having a hard time trying to find the US. There it is. Okay. So if you pull up the USDT dominance, uh, someone in my stream last night asked me to take a look at it because they said that it looked like it could be forming a top. Which could be good. That's good. That could That's be very good. good for price action on Bitcoin and also the altcoin market. So I did just want to bring this up real quick, guys. Um, if you bring this up side by side against Bitcoin, that's the NASDAQ. Um, switch this to Bitcoin. Um, so if you bring this up against Bitcoin. Too many, too many coins, Frank. Too many, too coins. many coins. Too many coins. Yeah, we should probably actually clear that out. To be uh, yeah, Frank, honest. we should. <laughs> I can't even use it. <laughs> um, okay, so if we go to the, uh, let's go to the weekly chart on Bitcoin, and we'll go to the weekly chart on the USDT dominance. Now, you know, just basically to look at this, basically when you have- Inverse. Yeah, exactly. It, it moves inverse to Bitcoin. Uh, when USDT tops out, it typically marks a bottom for Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through it, but if you go look at these these tops, it marks bottoms for Bitcoin almost, you know, exactly, uh, you know, pretty close. If you come right here, we are coming up to this trend line. Now, we did wick above it at some point, but we are starting to find some resistance on this trend line, indicating that we could possibly be topping out for the USDT dominance. And if this thing moves back down, uh, you know, again, just looking at this chart structure wise, sitting on top of this macro support. If USDT dominance decides to come down, it does look like a really good place. And it could support a pretty big, uh, the idea of a, having a pretty big relief bounce coming up pretty soon here. So Now, just, just so everybody understands that the reason why that works inverse is because when there's a lot of money in stable coins, that means people are waiting in positions for something to happen to move that money back into crypto or move mm -hmm. that money back into Bitcoin. So there's, like a, there's a reason why they're backwards correlated. So when you have a very low amount of, of USDT, that means that you've got a very high amount in crypto and people are bullish. So, you know, when you see stable coins moving into exchanges, that is uh, very bullish. When you see Bitcoin going out of exchanges, that's very bullish. But when you see those the opposites coming in, it's bearish. So, exactly. Yeah. 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 So definitely, uh, it looks like we could this this relief pump. I think is still in the room with us. Uh, I don't think we've seen the last of it, but maybe we get a little bit of a cool off period before heading back up.
That's like all 250K, I got. 250K, Tim Draper yeah, says. Yeah. 250K. <laughs> yeah, 200, definitely. By early 2023. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. I, that would be awesome. Hey, who, who doesn't want great. that? Real, yeah. Probably win-win win for us. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick before you hop off, Frank, yeah. I, that was some really good TA, really good stuff for people to watch. For those that are new at home, we had a question in there. Can you explain really quickly uh, what's a long and what's a short? Explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old. Okay, so I, I I think this is I'm not I'm not gonna try to get into the intricacies because I think a lot of people have the question of how do you actually make money when the price comes down? That's a little hard to explain. Um, but if I could just explain when you hear long and short, the easiest way to explain it is if you're longing, you're basically just betting that the price is gonna go up, and if you're shorting, you're betting the price is gonna go down. There you go. So that's yeah, it's uh, how you're able to actually make money. Shorting is a little bit longer of an explanation, but if you're interested in learning about that, definitely follow my YouTube channel, Frankie Candles. Or hit up frankiecandles.com. That's and right. You can sign up for trading links or that's right. We got some good Lab deals. Academy. Yeah. Good deals. Absolutely. All right. So that's all I got, guys. Bing bong. Back to Ben. Yeah. Bing. We have the trailer. Bong. I we do have the trailer. Let's um, play the trailer. Let's play that trailer. Here we go. Uh hold on. <laughs> Bitcoin is worthless artificial gold. Business was soaring as Bitcoin hit new highs in early 2021. Cryptocurrency is not supported by anything. Bitcoin was implemented in 2009 and since then has skyrocketed into value from global demand and growing use cases. Bitcoin to me has the prospect of becoming the dominant currency of the digital world. But earlier this year, the Vitovics say their account was hacked. Their investment, which had grown from a total of about $45,000 to some $168,000, was essentially wiped out. This industry is worth over $2.6 trillion. With that much on the line, you should take every precaution and do everything in your power to protect your piece of the pie. Someone on Twitter says, yes, it's rat poison, but the rat is actually the banking system. Crypto is about ownership. You are your own bank. Bitcoin was created as a new currency to address all of the pitfalls of the current failing money system. The number one threat to crypto currency is crypto. Eric Finman invested in Bitcoin when he was just 12 years old. Well, now he's 19 years old. You are folks are looking at a 19-year-old self-made millionaire. And it's all built upon a blockchain, which is very unique. It's like a bank ledger in the sky that no one can hack. Data does not lie. It'd be very hard to decipher between what really has value and what is just uh, hype. Meme coins, you gotta love them and hate them. It has never been a question in my mind. The cryptocurrency will replace our entire financial system. The future of crypto has only just begun. We're back. All right, guys. And that is called the Bitcoin Field Guide. I got it pulled up if you want to show it. Bitcoin Field Guide, Understanding Cryptocurrency. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out, you can find it on Amazon, find the whole thing. If you enjoy uh, watching clips of me much fatter, you will <laughs> you will certainly enjoy that. Yeah, I was really big. I was, was going to say, this was, was also uh, yeah, yeah. the beginning of our Weight Watchers ad campaign. Right? It was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was actually. So uh, Weight Watchers, you can sign up at uh, bitboy.com <laughs> slash deals Weight Watchers. Sorry, I don't use Weight Watchers. Uh, uh, but yeah, those are okay. uh, pretty good. So. Congratulations, though. You've obviously lost a lot of weight. Well, thank you, you, look, you look great. Well, you know... It, <laughs> I would like to think the chat. <laughs> I would like to think the haters and think the chat. And I would like to think crypto Twitter for, uh, you know, all the times that you called me fat. And finally, I decided to do something about it. So I was always going to do something about it. But, you know, the thing is, is like, you know, you get so busy and you're working and, you know, we hardly have any time. We do weightlifting, but we don't do a lot of cardio and stuff. Mm -hmm. You, you got to make time for it. But, you know, just decided it's something I want to do. You know, I don't want to be huge like I was. Nothing like uh, nothing like a bear market to, to uh, slim you down a little bit. It, it is for sure. Absolutely. Re eating a little less. That's right. Yeah, I mean, hey, <laughs> you know, <laughs> McDonald's, here we come. That's right. But it's not healthy, I guess, but I'm on the dollar menu now. Uh, so, all right, guys, uh, let's move on here. I want to talk about the story here. Uh, this is the big story of the day here. Bitcoin comfortably above 31500 Now, comfortably above. Comfortably. 
Let's see how comfortable that is. Let's see. Refresh that. Co comfortably above 31,500. I, these people are so, I, I just don't understand the, the swinging back and forth between what you believe. You know, it, it, one thing you can say about this channel for sure, if you go back and listen to what we've said, even when we were wrong about stuff, we, we don't change with the wind. You know, we always told you there was going to be a bear market this year. And, you know, we said, look, there was times where it looked like maybe things were going to go up. This is not that time. This is not that time. Yeah, I understand you don't have to have cardio to lose weight, but it does help. Yeah. It's just I still don't. I haven't done any cardio since I've been losing weight, you know, but it's just when you're doing a lot of weightlifting, then you're not doing any cardio and you're eating bad. It's a recipe to gain a lot of weight. So, uh, but anyways, tech investor Tim Draper says $250,000 by 2023. Now, it's June, guys. It is June right now. June. That means within, he says, January or February. He expects we're going to turn around and get to $250,000. I don't see it. I, come on, Tim. I mean, you know, I, I know you, you, you really, you know, struck out with your DMG project. We thought that was going to do really well. SEC said you had to close up shop, you know, <laughs> like, I, I don't really have a lot of confidence in what Tim Draper says. I'll be completely honest with you. Um, he's a guy that loves the media and he knows how to get into, uh, he knows how to get into the media cycle and insert himself. You know, they say any publicity is good publicity. That's what they say. So, you know, he's making a pretty big target here by saying 250 K by 2023. Um, so, and you look here, this article's already been disproven. It says comfortably above 31,500, which is leading some crypto analysts to believe that Bitcoin will soon be heading higher towards a $33,000 level. Um, uh, apparently the golly, this guy, that guy's another idiot. Uh, as, as for well-known crypto skeptic and gold bug, Peter Schiff, he believes unhappy. He seems unhappy about the positive coverage Bitcoin received yesterday at CNBC for rebounding from last week's lows. He said CNBC so excited about Bitcoin drives back above 32 K when Bitcoin is falling at CNBC barely talks about it, but when it makes a big move up, they can't stop talking about it. the experts invited on air to comment all work in the crypto industry. So they're extremely so biased. Basically, they're the Peter Schiff inverse. Yes, That's exactly. basically exactly what he yeah. does, just the opposite with Bitcoin. As a legendary tech investor, Tim Draper, he explained during a podcast interview last week that he remains confident that the Bitcoin price will hit 250K by early 2023, just like he predicted a few years ago. I mean, this is like this is like when you predict a team to win the Super Bowl and they're like three and six. And you're like, well, I think they're going to turn around. I mean, I committed to it, so I'm going to stick with it until they're mathematically eliminated. Well, you know, he's about to get mathematically eliminated. Here. It's really hard for me uh, to understand how with, you know, uh, how with the macroeconomic situation we have going on that he can say he thinks it's going to be 250K by next year. Like, that's insane. To, to say that in a bull market where you're running ahead of it, which we were, I mean, that makes sense. Right. But it's, we're clearly in a bear market. Like, he's been through this before. He knows. That's what's so interesting yes. is, ironically, his statement was more believable and accurate and is actually more believable than the end of 2022. So I remember when he was making these predictions back in 2018, 2019, and we were looking at them on the channel. I, I just kept saying, like, why do none of these people consider the four-year cycle when they're making these predictions of when Bitcoin will hit certain numbers. And they, they don't think about the cycle at all. Like, it doesn't make sense for Bitcoin to hit a new all-time high in 2023. Nope. It, it doesn't make sense. According to history, that would have been an off year. We've never seen anything like that before. And, you know, the, the, people always continue to tell me the same thing. They've been saying the same thing since 2019. Different. It's different this time. It's going to be different. It's going to break away this time. Well, guys, guess what? We're right where we, we're right where I said we were going to be for years. For years, since 2019, I've been telling people, this is the way that the market works. Now, we didn't hit the number last year. I know that. We got a lot of egg on our face. Didn't hit 100K like we thought. Uh, but we nailed the time frame. And we were too stupid to see that we were right when it was happening. And maybe we would have made some better financial decisions. Uh, so we're right in it with you guys that didn't take enough profits. What I'll say is, like, when you're listening to these people that are these legendary investors, and they're not taking into consideration the four-year cycle of Bitcoin and every four years it hits a bottom, every four years it hits a top, then you can't take them seriously until we actually see something different. And there are still people today saying cycles are invalid. Cycles are invalid. This is not real. Like, it's not, having doesn't really have a big effect. How can you say that? 
Like, I don't understand how people can say it's like I was talking to CNBC yesterday and, and uh, you know, they, they were talking about, well, you know, how can you still believe in crypto when uh, the price is down so much? What? What? Like, we, we said the price was going to be down this much. Like, right. we've known this for years. The price is going to be down during this time. And I just can't understand why people... Here, here's why. The idea that there's a four-year cycle and that Bitcoin is predictable, yet it's so volatile, people just can't accept that as reality. Like, oh, it's too simple. Too yeah. simple. Too simple. They well, want to think every... They want to make it more complicated than it yes. is. They want you to think like, oh, you have to be some kind of genius to make money with this, right? No, not it's actually. Like, no, you just save and hold and yeah, let yeah. time work. Uh, Bitcoin reclaims the spot as the 10th most valuable asset in the world. Hmm. Y- yada, yada, yada. Uh, it, it beat out Meta. because Meta dropped again. So here's the top 10 in the world. Bitcoin did get up to, where was it at? Number five, maybe? Somewhere around there. Market cap was over 1.5 trillion, I think, right? Correct, was it? Yeah. Maybe it was 1.2. Whatever it was, Bitcoin was much higher. Uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin, obviously a scam, according to Berkshire Hathaway, uh, who says that, uh, you know, Bitcoin is obviously a scam and yada, 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 and yet it's about to approach your market cap. So maybe you're the scam, old guy. All right. Crypto sell off viewed by investors opportunistically as Bitcoin seen hitting 65K by 2023. What is wrong with these people? What is wrong with these people? Like, I don't get it. Like, how are they so dumb? Oh, man. Well, I tell you what, Bitcoin is looking for viewers, looking for clicks, what they're looking for. Or just, you, you won't find us, you know, pandering to, to, you know, what people want to believe. We're not going to sit here and tell you the Bitcoin's super bullish when it's not. That's idiotic. Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin's price action over the years has resembled nothing less than a head-shaking roller coaster ride. Uh, and I would agree with that because uh, you can look back and you can see where the hills are on the roller coaster before you ride it. And you can look and see where the dips are and where the loops are. So while you're riding the roller coaster, you generally know what to expect. And, you know, it's not, you're not blindfolded, you know, during this. Very similar to what we've just been talking about. Despite its ups and downs uh, uh, and the odd fear caused by an unanticipated price crash, Digital currency market has demonstrated remarkable resilience, and investors are returning to Bitcoin and other big cryptos like Cardano and Ethereum. Um, Bitcoin has outpaced the majority of the crypto market lately. Investors unfazed by recent sell-off. Um, and this is why, this is long-term mindset. We talk about this all the time. You need a long-term mindset. If you don't have one, you need to develop one. This is how you win in crypto. Uh, the short idea or, or, or the short-term mindset that lets Let's get a bunch of tiny little coins and make money really quick with them. Well, if you do that, that's great. This isn't the time in the market when you can do that. 2020 was the year when you could have done that. You take that money and then you roll it into the more reliable stuff for the long term. That's the way that you win. It's the same thing with trading. Uh, you know, I saw somebody in there saying, you know, all traders lose. Well, that's not true. I turned $80,000 into a million last year in one month. I ended up losing 100000 of it and I cash the rest out. I haven't traded since. Now, we talked about doing some trading on a smaller scale uh, on the channel again. I don't like waking up with the buy bit sweats. It's not comfortable, but I crushed it in the market. And you guys saw that. You watched it on the show. So it is possible to win in trading if you understand it and you do things the right way and you have a long-term mindset. When you're always looking for that 150X leverage long that you're just hoping this is a bottom and you're going to make money, you're going to lose. You're always going to lose those bets. Uh, but when you do it the right way, when you think over the long term and you take small wins over time, then you can definitely do very well in trading. People make a living trading, but it is the exception. Most people are not going to be able to make a living trading, just like anything else in the world. 90% of all businesses fail. Does that mean you don't want to start a new business? No, because no. you think you can do it and you and you do what you need to do to be successful. Um, I've had, I probably had 14 or 15 businesses. 13 wow. of them have failed. Two crushed it. Uh, now, I mean, I have more businesses now. It's taken a lot of stuff, but I know m- most of my businesses has failed. But you don't get in it for the failure with all the failure that comes success down the road because you learn lessons. And in crypto, it's just like that. We learn from a lot of our lessons on this channel. We used to really focus on those smaller coins. And you know what? During a bull market, things are moving up. People do well. But you see in a bear market, they go down 97%. Yeah. And so it's important to move into more valuable things over time. That's what we've been preaching for a while. Absolutely. We were actually having Frank and I that same conversation in the office this morning when I came in, just saying like he was lamenting about all the lessons he learned in crypto. Yep. And ha- he said most of them, people told him beforehand 
that it was going to go that way. Yep. Same with me, probably same with you. Is like people will say like, oh, no, you need to wait for this, wait for that, don't buy this. And then you're like, well, let me try it for myself. And then you learn like, oh, I shouldn't have FOMO'd in or I shouldn't have bought the top or you do that a couple times and you learn. But if you just, you think you would just be able to listen to what other people say and do it, but a lot of times you just have to. You have to learn it yourself. Yes. It doesn't hit the same. No. And that's and that's taking advice on anything. Like I remember when I started this channel, I, Dusty Porter, another large YouTuber that I know in real life, uh, he's got like 300K in the tech space, maybe 400K now. And he gave me all of these lessons on all I need to do to be successful. Right. You know, if I just would have listened to him from the very beginning, I would have done extremely well, much faster. We would have been able to run this channel with people actually watching in the beginning instead of two years and nobody watched. So, you know, it was the same kind of thing. Like looking back, I'm like, if I just would have listened to what he said, but I had to learn it myself. I had to learn mm -hmm. that there are people that are better at this than you. There are experts out there. If you listen to the experts, then you're going to generally do well. Um, so there we go. Uh, you know, people unfazed by this Bitcoin dip. Bitcoin, uh, whether it's the dip or the bottom, uh, the assets under management say, uh, let's see what they say here. Fair market is given a lot to ponder about with respect to investor behavior towards falls and dips. Uh, buy the dip. I've warned you guys about buy the dip. I, I tell you guys, that is a, that's the, the awfulest phrase in crypto because anytime the price drops, that doesn't mean it's time to buy a dip. When things are bullish, you buy the dips. When things are bearish, expect the dips to get lower. And I think that's a big misunderstanding that many people have uh, in the world of crypto. Uh, similarly, during the end of 2021, there was an increase in dominance of buying the dip with each new dip, created another scenario where Bitcoin refused to go bullish. And this trend continuing well into January 22. Um, crypto Compare recently published his monthly report, one talking about the global digital asset investment product landscape. Since April 2022, total assets under management have fallen by 28.6% to $34.2 billion. Uh, this is attributed to the turbulence in digital markets after terrorist collapse, Fed's crypto stance, and the Russian invasion. Um, AUM of all companies fell dramatically in May. Uh, furthermore, the average net flows across digital assets returned positively after the price drop in May. Uh, there was an average weekly net inflow of $66.5 million. Uh, so the assets under management have uh, fallen dramatically. But due to the social, uh, like when you're talking about social dominance in terms of, of uh, crypto social media, uh, it suggests that we won't see a large dip in June like we saw in May. And I think that makes sense because we've told you what we expect. Here's what we expect. The most likely scenario. We expect the price rally to run back up. Okay, similarly to what Frank was saying. Very similar. And then one big capitulation dip towards the end of the no, end of the year after the uh, after the midterm elections the last two midterm elections resulted in a bottom the bottom of bitcoin cycle of the bear market the bottom within 3 to 5 weeks after the midterm elections both the last cycles so we expect the same thing um doesn't mean it's going to happen for sure certainly two is not a, a dramatic track record to make predictions off of but it's all that we have uh, so you've got to think there's something to that. We've seen most all-time highs for Bitcoin coming after the presidential elections uh, on the inverse, you know, on the on the opposite two years. So this is definitely something to pay attention to. Uh, significance of Jay Powell's meeting with Joe Biden. By the way, did you see, uh, we didn't cover this article. I meant to send this to Johnny. Uh, did you see this yesterday? Uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Fellin Yellen concede she was wrong on the path inflation would take. Wow. She admitted that she was totally wrong and this inflation has taken her by surprise. This is how you know that she does not watch the BitBoy Crypto channel. Because we've been telling you, Janet, Felon, Yellen, that you were wrong the whole time. But you're the expert. You're not an expert. You're a money-grubbing hoe. I'm sorry. I just have to say it. I really oh. hate that lady. Yeah, I said it. Money-grubbing hoe. She is a hoe to the banks. That's exactly what Janet Yellen is. She will sell her soul for dollars. Yep. Absolutely. And she's shown that with a consistent track record. So let me tell you this. When we look at Janet Yellen, Tweety Bird Monster, a.k.a. Penguin, when we look at her and we see all the stuff that she's done, and she said, comes out and says, hey, I was wrong about this, that's a distraction. Yeah. She's, she's so manipulative that she knows how to tweak uh, public sentiment 
and she knows how to get out there in front of things, there's something else going on, and she's using this as a distraction. I would be very curious to see what really going on behind the scenes with Janet Yellen, or maybe her overlords said she had to. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's part of it. I think it's time. Basically, they can sorry, start. That wasn't family friendly. I'm sorry. No, it makes sense. I mean, I agree. That's I think she is. they're backpedaling. I think they knew the whole time exactly what was going to happen. And they knew the inflation would continue, and they just didn't have a choice. They needed to tighten. We're going to run into a li liquidity crisis again, yep. and they'll have to open up the coffers, and we'll be we'll continue the same cycle. But they like to lead the public us along like we're a bunch of idiots, <laughs> and not and just give us double talk, and then just think, oh, oh they'll forget, they'll stop paying attention. Just sh show them a Johnny Depp case or something, distract them. We're, we're smarter than that. Yeah. This is obvious. Right. Like, inflation was obvious. You, like, this is how idiotic these people that run our government are. Like, this is how dumb they are. They literally are telling you that we can print as much money as we want and inflation will not become a problem. Yeah. That is the most, like, fifth grade question and answer. Mm -hmm. Like, in fifth grade, hey, why don't we just print more money? You're a fifth grade teacher knows more than the person running our entire treasury yeah think about that that was one it's of my simple supply and demand that was one of my favorite memes it was gavin newsom 1.7 trillion dollar incentive plan to fight inflation and it says tell me you don't understand and what causes inflation without telling me you don't understand what causes inflation <sighs> janet felon yelling i tell you what that's bad. uh hey i bet she can twerk it for a real one i bet she has a lot of people are saying that hey she twerked for them dollars. That's hey, right. you got you got you got Jamie Diamond up there. Come on, come on, fella. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Twerk that thing. She'd be oh, back there. You know, she'd be Richard Hart in it. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. That's a scary combo. Jamie it Diamond is. and uh Janet Yellen. Hey. Well, yeah. There's some people that they're into that. Yeah. Uh the significance of Jay Powell's meeting with Joe Biden. Uh, if you hung out near the White House on Tuesday, you may have seen New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern or members of international pop music sensation BTS. Great. Um, Biden will not force, is what happened, Biden will not force the Fed to raise interest rates at a certain pace or magnitude. Okay, so obviously this is what's happening here. You have the president saying, hey, I want to be separate from this. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, if you could, if you could, I'd like, you know, I, I'd like to not be associated with this. So, you know, when the election comes, like maybe I won't get crucified. Right. Uh, like, not happening, but sure. Like, basically, I really don't have any power to influence this, so let's make sure everybody knows that. Yeah. There's Janet Gillett comments over here. Pretty funny. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, Tuesday's meeting marked the first time Powell had met with the president since Biden nominated him for a second term as Fed chair in November 2021. Uh, a history of Fed chairs visiting the White House. Uh, you can see, obviously, Ben Bernanke was, uh, you know, obviously during the financial crisis visiting quite a bit. Uh, then we had Janet Yellen uh, when she was just a poor, before she made all her money with the banks, when she was just a poor Fed chair, um, 2014 through 2017. And then, of course, you see here 2019 to 2021, uh, the amount of times that Powell has gone, very little. Um, maybe that's how he keeps a job, is he just says, hey, I won't bother you. Yeah. Uh, what Biden's doing with Powell in the op-ed is basically getting the message out here. Hey, we're fighting inflation. This isn't really our fault, et cetera. <laughs> Uh, said Steve Sosnick, uh, Chief Strategist at Interactive Brokers. That's exactly what they're doing. This is a dog and pony show, obviously. Higher rates, which can choke off economic growth, have been a historical thorn in the sides of politicians facing re-election. This is why I've said it, guys. Uh, this is not a statement of politics. This is a statement of fact. If the government, if the economy is still in a recession or it's still trending downwards at the time of the midterm elections, doesn't matter how much this Roe versus Wade thing becomes an issue, right, on the federal level, which is certainly what the, the, the Democrats are going to try to make the issue. There's no way with the economy in a, a down place that Republicans do not sweep everything. If this were backwards and Donald Trump was in charge right now, then there would be no way the Democrats would not come in and sweep. Because you can't have an economy where people are hurting and you're starting to get civil unrest and people not want change. People are always voting for change uh, out of their current situation when it's down. So, you know, this could be, you know, very disastrous. And you see Joe Biden getting out in front of this and trying to make moves, but nobody buys this, right? It doesn't matter how much you say 
hey, Biden is not responsible for uh, the gas prices and you can like factually show, you know, you can factually show both sides probably, but it depends on what facts you use. But factually show like, no, you know, he really isn't responsible for this. It doesn't matter. The president gets blamed. Donald Trump did not cause the pandemic. He did not cause the pandemic. A lot of what happened during that time obviously was out of his control. But guess what he lost? He gets blamed for the entire thing. That's the way it, that's the way it works when you're at the top of anything. Look at a football team. You get a quarterback that, you know, throws an interception uh, on the last play of a game uh, to, and you're out of the playoffs. Who gets the blame? The coach. The coach didn't have anything to do with throwing that ball. He didn't throw the interception. But the coach is the one that gets the blame because he's in charge. It's time for Joe Biden to put on his big boy pants and realize, hey, you are in charge of all this. You can't deflect and say that, you know, I have no control over all this. You have put the people in place. You renominated Jerome Powell. <laughs> you renominated Jerome Powell. How in the world can you renominate someone who has driven our economy to rubbish? How? It makes, and then you want to say, Nobody blame me. You guys are in charge. You just put him back in charge. I, I, the fact Jerome Powell has a job is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in the history of this country. It makes no sense. You have these people now admitting that they know, that they know nothing, that they had no clue any of this was going on, where you have YouTubers who do know. How stupid are these people? And how stupid do they think you are? That's the thing that always pisses me off about the government is how low IQ and how stupid they believe that you are, that you accept this as fact. No, no, we're not putting up with it anymore. We, we see through the facade. Everyone sees through it. So I really hate the government. Okay. Uh, Fed money printer goes into reverse. What does it mean for crypto? The United States Federal Reserve is starting the process of paring back its $9 trillion balance sheet that ballooned in recent years in a move called quantitative tightening. Uh, here's Wendy O. Uh, the worst part about this is that I would imagine 80% of Americans have no idea what quantitative tightening is. Uh, why would it, is that a surgery? Uh, why would we? Uh, this wasn't taught in public school. The SEC should worry about educating Americans on those, these terms as I believe that's part of protecting us. No, their protection, Wendy, is us not knowing what's going on. That's the only way they're protected. You know, that's the only way they can protect us. You know, it's kind of like if, if you just imagine like, uh, you know, some, there's like a village, you know, I think there's that movie, The Village, I think, mm -hmm. you know, there's a village and, you know, the people are trained to believe, I don't know if this is the exact plot of the movie, but I think, I have never seen it, but they're, they're trained to believe that on the other side of this, uh, of these, this wood line is basically monsters. And basically they, they take the people and they say, oh, you know, you got to stay, you, you can't leave this area, you can't do this. They train you to believe that it's only certain people that can protect you from the monsters that are out there. What you come to realize is the people who are supposed to be protecting you are the ones that created the monsters. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're the ones that created this illusion of you being trapped. And that's what the government does. They try to protect you from stuff you don't need to be protected from. Why? Because it's about control and it's about power and it's about them getting what they want. So people like Janet Fellen Yellen can get $7 million for Zoom talks before she becomes the Treasury Secretary. Or, uh, yeah, the Treasury Secretary, she is. So, makes me sick. Fed plans on treating its balance sheet by $47.5 billion per month for the next three months. Um, wage increases across American workers, especially in the hospitality industry, have already been observed as labor demand remains high. Once again, guys, job market is going to be changing 100%. It's going to move from an employee, an employee market to an employer's market very quickly. I hope a lot of you guys are getting ready um, for that, there's going to be a lot less choice in jobs here pretty soon. That's an effect. That, that's an effect of deflation. Which I mean, we're not technically in deflation. We're in quantitative tightening. We're in a deflationary time. But we're not negative in, in uh, deflation at this point. Uh, Web two pundits lobby Washington against crypto influence. Uh, a group of 26 technologists, including some of crypto's most fervent critics, have sent a letter to U.S. lawmakers urging them to resist pressure from crypto financiers and lobbyists to create a regulatory safe haven for digital assets. Who are these people? There are, you know, more of these idiots. You know, more people that made all their money in the old system and they, they can't accept the fact, they cannot accept the fact that the system is changing and but that the system is broken. I can't, that next sentence, they argue that blockchain-based financial products are a disaster for financial privacy. 
what exists right now that isn't a disaster for financial privacy? That's insane. It's, they argued that it's a disaster for financial privacy, but then they also say it's a gift to money launderers. <laughs> what? what? It doesn't you make can, any sense. You cannot, you can't with these people. And I just say, the more I talk to people that are in the traditional world, they just can't, they can't reconcile, reconcile the future. They can't reconcile it. They, they can't move on from the way things are, have always been done. Even though we have the system of fiat that we have. Now, just so you understand what fiat is, people throw that word around. Fiat is paper currency. It doesn't have to be paper, but most time, a representation currency of something that's not backed by anything. That's literally the definition of fiat. When we had the gold standard back in the U.S. dollar, up until 1971, you know, you could also make the argument until 1920s when, you know, there, there were the initial moves to, to kind of get gold uh, away from the dollar were made. 1971, it was completed. Basically, I didn't know this. Did you know that that happened because France basically, yeah. like, said they were going to come take all their gold? Yeah, they basically started that. calling their loan. They basically realized there was a lot more dollars coming out of the U.S. than they thought they had gold for. So they said, hey, we're actually going to, we're going to swap our dollars for gold. And we were like, uh-oh. Yeah, exactly. So... Nixon had to be like, all right, uh, yeah, we don't actually have it. And yeah. from that point forward, the dollar has not been backed by anything. That's fiat currency. Fiat currency always fails. It always fails over time because there's nothing backing it. And then the government's always going to print. You saw, that, you saw this in the Roman Empire. You saw it in the Greek Empire. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing it in the United States, which a lot of people have called the new Roman Empire. And it's going to end in the same way. And these traditional folks, I just think about this guy I was talking about you know, talking to you yesterday for CNBC, like in his brain, he can't get past the point that he believes in fiat currency. Right. He believes in something that's way more asinine than crypto. Exactly. And the fact they believe in this illusion, it just makes you feel like how brainwashed are people? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's the people that are just like, oh, it's the way it's always been done. And right. they don't question it. And then when it does start getting questioned and you see the flaws in it, they, they suddenly take all their questions, they shove them in a file and say, I'm just going to forget I asked that question. Because when you start unraveling and you start going down the rabbit hole and understanding what a mess our financial system is in the United States, then you end up at a place of sadness, of like, oh, I, this is really sad that there's no way this system will be able to continue for 50 years from now. Absolutely. There's That's, no way. It's very dark realization. It is dark. And exactly. it makes you question so many things. I think that's part of it. Yeah. is accepting that you've been sold this illusion for a long time means you really have to go down that path of, you know, what else did I believe as fact that I'm finding out is pure illusion? Well, and then, and then also, uh, this is the reason, guys. Like, this is the reason why you're ahead of the curve. Because you are not in that box of people that refuses to look to the future and accept what is coming. And now you're able to take advantage of this opportunity, whereas a lot of people are not taking advantage of it because they can't accept that it's coming. If you are not in the crypto industry every single day, like most of us are, then you don't understand how much is going on behind the scenes in crypto. And, and the people that have the, the mindset to the traditional system is best, they, they can't see any of that. And we know, it, you know, it is a bit of an echo chamber in crypto. We know what's coming. There's, you, you don't have companies investing billions and billions and billions of dollars into something that's not going to be here in a few years. Nope. You know? Uh, Fed paper looks at the potential effects of CBDC on monetary policy. Uh, let's see. They released it. First scenario involved exchanging cash for CBDC, which sure. affected the categorization, categorization of assets. And the Fed and the household involved but had no effects on policy implementation. Uh, let's see here. According to the authors, paper showed that the potential effects on monetary policy implementation from a retail CBDC are highly dependent on the initial conditions of the Fed Reserve's balance sheet. So there you go. Just a couple quick notes about that. We're running way behind today. Yeah. Uh, validator leak. Uh, uh, validator leak secret Luna War Room chat log. Wow. Oh, boy. Leak. Uh, the group was named Terra Rebirth League and contained members of Terraform Labs, including Do Kwon and most major validators. The push to release Luna 2.0 is seen as a matter of urgency within the War Room. Um, as Terra validator Thor Maximalist exclusively told Crypto Slate, I think it was urgent, and every day that passed uh, by value was drifting away. Uh, protocols were thinking about moving to other chains or starting their own layer ones. Projects on the chain are multi uh, multi 
multiplicators. I don't know how hard time saying that. Oh, community value every single day would have passed the multiplicator. <laughs> the multiplicator would have went down. Uh, the internal group defined itself as a specialized task force, uh, independently operated, critically assessing all attack vulnerabilities. Uh, one stake proposed, one member proposed to put the five validators with highest voting power in charge. Oh, man. The fact they're trying to make all these decisions during a crisis. Yeah. Um, let's see here. A stable coin for <laughs> They can't be serious, right? Like, th th these people are just as dumb as the government, you know? Like, hey, let's come up with a new stable coin, uh, you know, for Luna 2.0. I'm sure people will buy into it. Yeah. Guys, L Luna is dead, 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 dead. Dead, dead. Run away as far as you can. Um, you know, I and, and I would say run away from algorithm stable coins. I, I think if this has not taught you, they are not stable. I don't know what it's going to take because when it comes to this, when we've now had an unprecedented event happen in crypto, that means there's now precedent. <laughs> you know, like it was unprecedented, but now we have precedent for how someone can attack a, an algorithmic stable coin and a project behind it and make them both go kaput. And so I would be very, very nervous about investing in algorithmic stable coins. USDC is the only stable coin we suggest people get into. Uh, we believe eventually that's going to be the digital dollar. I'm not a fan of Circle. I'm not a fan of Coinbase. You know, I'm, yeah, I get, Coinbase, I go back and forth with, but definitely not a fan of Circle. But guys, they got all the government ties. You know, Swim with the Whales uh, is definitely the safest one out there, especially with all the news uh, from uh, Tether. Got kind of some inside info on the, uh, the Bitfinex hack yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, about kind of some stuff going on behind the scenes with the government and it's and Bitfinex over that hack. Uh, it, Bitfinex, obviously the company also behind Tether. Uh, you know, the government hates that company and the government is trying to hold on to all that money. Just like I said, they would. The yeah. billions of dollars. Of course they are. Of course they are. Uh, possession is nine tenths of the law. Remember that. Who's got it right now? Mm -hmm. United States. Where are you going to come and take it? Yeah. You know, that's what they're going to say. Uh, when the first call to restart the blockchain came, many validators did not know what block height they should be at. What a mess. Validators decided to hold off on restarting the chain, even with 63% approval, until they received uh, uh, TFLs, which is the uh, Terra Foundation uh, blessing to restart the chain. Uh, the group intended to restart the chain only for one month. Um, since the launch, there have been countless issues, yada, yada, yada. Terraform Labs caught moving $4.8 million through a oh, shell God. company. This is... It appears Doquan may be in for more legal trouble as allegations arise, accusing him of further financial crimes. Uh, given the increasing number of legal battles on the horizon for Terraform Labs and Doquan, it's even more disconcerting that the entire Terraform Labs legal team reportedly resigned in a <laughs> mass walkout last week. Yeah, I don't want to be associated with this company, yeah. you know, at this point. Uh, it may be reasonable to assume that KBS was attempting to leak the name without saying it outright, consulting, uh, consulting firm K Office with the lab sign uh, further doquan amended the original lunar revival plan to remove reference to kernel labs in a highly suspicious move um yeah guys it, it continues to be sketchy we're going to see more sketchy stuff come out of this i don't believe i'm sweating like a hog up here um i, I don't believe we're going to see uh, uh this end anytime soon and i will tell you what's been very interesting is uh we have certainly seen a large amount of interest in this from the mainstream media uh, mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of interest in this, uh, you know, from people that don't really know anything about crypto, but they know about Terra now. Um, they know about Luna. They know about UST, which has been really fascinating. Like, this is the stuff that sucks about crypto. And we have something terrible like this in a bear market. Now it, give, it, it gives fodder for all the people that want to continue to FUD the crypto space. But I, I, there's a very important lesson here to be learned as well. Uh, we keep telling you, make sure you're diversified. If one coin going to zero crushes your portfolio, then you do not need to be in that coin alone. You need to, to move it up. So, and that's something, guys, like we've always talked about, uh, you know, we've always talked about, even when we had like, you know, coins that we thought could potentially 1,000x or whatever, and they didn't do well. We've always told you guys, only 5% of your portfolio should be very speculative coins or less. Uh, so, you know, when, you, when you're putting this portfolio together, you need to be investing the bulk majority of your money into Bitcoin, Ethereum, the top coins, XRP, Cardano, uh, Polkadot, Solana, you know, those kinds of coins. That needs to be almost, you know, 90% of your portfolio. Another 5%, maybe a little bit lower than the top 50. And then maybe 5% where you take a flyer on some stuff. So you should never go all in on one coin. It doesn't matter how much you believe in that coin. Because we saw, even with Terra Luna, nothing is guaranteed. Uh, Dogecoin's parents are fighting Musk and, J Musk and Jackson Palmer, Exchange Barbs. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. Uh, they're going back and forth 
about this. Uh, I think we covered this yesterday on the show. We talked about Doge and Elon Musk, but not the Jackson Pollard yeah. stuff. I don't know what they were saying, but Dogecoin founder on current correction. I wish it was the uh, the end of crypto. This Jackson Palmer guy, he's such a such a dork. He really he he's the worst. He he's he's worse than uh, Elon Musk by a long shot. Uh, he his words are he believes that uh, uh, it is a God. I'm sweating. I see myself visibly sweating on the show. I got fired up. I got real angry on here. Jackson Palmer said he hates crypto because he realized it's a tool for the alt right. Did he really? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He said that. He said that years ago. Actually, he said he gave it up because it it uh it favors an alt right capitalistic society. He doesn't like capitalism. He hates capitalism. It, that tells you what kind of person he is. Uh, so he's a communist, and so you know he he doesn't want crypto. He wants control, and crypto gives choices. Uh, so he says he wish he would have never created Dogecoin. You know, I, I guess he doesn't because you know he he has no money. He founded this coin. He's got billions of dollars in market cap, or did at one time. I don't know what it's at now. And he's poor, you know? So, of course, you know, he didn't monetize it. He didn't make money off of it. And so, you know, he, he really is regretting everything that happened. I mean, I guarantee if he had stayed involved and he had billions of dollars, he would feel differently. But he's bitter about what happened and that, you know, people toss his name around and he's included in this and he got left out of everything, you know? So, um, there you go. Uh, KuCoin plugs into Web3 with new decentralized wallet. Uh, cryptocurrency platform KuCoin has launched a new decentralized wallet platform, is interested in Web3, grows stronger. Uh, JP Morgan moving into uh, DeFi with Singapore Pilot on asset tokenization. Uh, let's move on to, to Ripple. We've got a show. We've got to shoot after this, so we've got to kind of hurry through. Sorry, we took a little bit too much time probably today. Uh, Ripple partner SBI Holdings to develop a smart yen with recent investment in New York-based startup of digital asset. If you're in the XRP Army, Make sure to throw the X up and make sure to smash that like button. Number one thing you can do as a member of Bit Squad and the XRP Army to make sure that people see this uh, content. And also a reminder, we're going to have uh, Eleanor Tarrett on the show tomorrow. Oh, that's I cool. think we have Gary Solway on for TA. And then mm -hmm. at 12.30, we have Eleanor coming on. So we're going to try to keep uh, <clears throat> try to keep uh, Gary Solway's pretty short, I think. So we don't go over too much. Um, okay, so she's going to update us on the SEC case and everything like that. So make sure to come tomorrow and check that out. Uh, Ripple's long-term partner of SBI Holdings has announced a strategic investment in the base, uh, New York-based startup. Um, a similar announcement by the team at Digital Asset further explains the company will collaborate with SBI to drive digital assets concept for programmable money into the Japanese market through a newly created smart yen program, which will address key retail banking challenges, customer growth, and retention. Uh, I've already told you guys that when it comes to CBDCs, we're going to have retail CBDCs which will be for the average person, which will be probably the, the USDC, I believe, the digital dollar. Then we will also have wholesale CBDCs. These will be done for institutions and businesses and enterprise. These are the kinds of CBDCs that we're going to see Ripple involved with. So the high level, uh, you know, business of finance. Uh, and that's kind of what we were seeing there is, you know, testing out a smart yen. The Hinman docs become focus of new conference when it comes to the SEC versus Ripple. Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn, there's William Hinman right there, uh, has scheduled a new conference between the U.S. SEC and Ripple Lawyers to discuss renewed assertions of attorney-client privilege. Conference is scheduled to take place on June 7th. Since no call-in information has been provided, this appears to be an in-person conference only. Interesting. Uh, in April, the judge denied the regulator's motion for reconsideration of the deliberative process privilege ruling. A uh, judge claimed that personal views of the agency staff members were not protected by the DPP. Um, so this will be interesting to see what comes out of this. Uh, the primary purpose is going to be sharing the drafts of the speech uh, to obtain legal advice. They have to remain confidential. So the long and the short of it, what they're trying to put together here are all the drafts of the speech that didn't necessarily make it to the speech. And all of them, I believe, but one did not include Ethereum. Ethereum seems to have been, been thrown in at the last minute, which certainly supports uh, the uh, ETH gate, as they call it, where uh, uh, consensus, uh, the Ethereum Alliance, Simpson and Thatcher, they were all involved in bribing William Hinman to get him to throw Ethereum into the speech. Look, certainly may be possible according to all the evidence that we have. Uh, I would say probable uh, is, is actually more uh, likely uh, what is happening here. 
So we'll have to see what happens with uh, this situation, this case, but we do believe it will be in soon. We'll get an update by next year. Uh, we'll get an update from Eleanor on what she believes. Uh, Ethereum's are passing $25 billion in all-time NFT sales. Uh, Supreme Court blocks Texas controversial social media law. Oh, how about that? Well, that sucks. What was it? The social media law where you can now sue YouTube or Google for uh, uh, oh, censorship. Section 230 or whatever it was. Yeah, appealing Section 230 for uh, social media in Texas. Supreme Court has voted 5-4 to four to block Texas social media censorship law. Hmm. Major boon for tech companies who have been fighting against content moderation laws. Um, so we'll see what's going on with this. This is not good. Texas pot, uh, passed law in September. Opponents immediately challenged it. And here we go. That's where you're going to see how bought off the courts are. Uh, Binance reviewing all possible options for Forbes investment after they scrapped their SPAC. Uh, we know that, uh, you know, uh, they have a lot of money that's flowing into that. Or they, I think they worked with Forbes like $150 million or something to create a SPAC. But that may not be happening. Fireblock appoints former head of England as director of their CBDC. Uh, of course, we got consensus. Uh, we are giving away passes. Don't forget, guys, if you want to check out my Twitter, uh, you can find our pinned tweet here. You can get, uh, you know, enter to win some passes to consensus. Uh, we will be going there. Very few people have entered so far. Maybe refresh. Maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how many people have entered. No, not a lot of people have entered. So you might have a really good shot uh, to, to win this contest. So check it out. All right, guys, uh, you have a question or two? Yeah, real quick. We had Grant ask this question several times. Based on your ISO 222 or 200. It's 2022. 2022. That's how, you, that's how you're supposed to say it. 2022. So based on that video, are you looking at any other assets? Mm. XLM or anything like that? Algo, maybe? Uh, Maybe Algo. I mean, mm. yeah, we like Algo a lot. Uh, we think Algo is going to do very well outside of that. Not necessarily uh, based on I, that. Or? Um, look, I, I've got all my eggs in the XRP basket. Uh, there, we we certainly have a lot of Algorand. I, I'm not really interested in IOTA. I'm not interested in XDC. Uh, XDC is okay, but it's just not done. Didn't make our cut for portfolio. I don't hate XDC. Uh, XLM, something I I don't want to support. Uh, I hate Jed McCaleb. I think he's responsible for some of the biggest disasters in the history of crypto. Mm -hmm. uh, Single handedly responsible for the uh, Mt. Gox hack. Uh, mm -hmm. So people don't know, Mt. Gox was the thing that almost killed crypto. Probably the closest to the edge crypto has ever been. 90% of all transactions were going through Mt. Gox. Uh, Jed McCaleb sold it to a guy, Mark Grappelles, who had no idea what he was doing, knew nothing mm -hmm. about crypto. And then shortly thereafter, it got hacked and, and destroyed and people lost You know what now equates to billions and billions of dollars uh, meanwhile, Jed McCaleb just skates through like he didn't do anything. You know, he didn't have any any role in that. Yeah. Starts new companies, used to work at Ripple. Weird. They're going after Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse. But they're not going after Jed McCaleb, who made more money than anyone with Ripple. Yeah. Jed McCaleb. Yeah. Jed McCaleb made more money than Brad Garlinghouse or Chris Larson, and yet he gets to skate free. I think there's a great chance he's a whistleblower for the SEC against uh, against Ripple. When he left, it was very tumultuous and very contentious. Uh, he has dumped the price for years and years. And so I won't support XLM. It's, it is centralized. XLM is way more centralized than Ripple ever dreamed of being. And yet, Jed McCaleb floats out, oh, no, it's decentralized. Blah, 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 blah. All, all the stuff he says he left Ripple over. Hey, XLM burnt half the supply without telling anybody. Like, what? So, no, I will not support XLM. I will never support XLM. It will act as a test net for Ripple. I do believe that. Uh, but not because that's what they want. So I'm just not a fan of XLM. So that, that's why. There you go. And then last question real quick. We had a couple people asking about uh, big developmental things like for the Vassal Hard Fork for Cardano yep. and the XRP case settling. If they happen in a bear market, do we expect pumps? Uh, basically, somebody was asking about the XRP lawsuit or Ripple lawsuit settling. Yeah. Can we expect a significant pump if that were to happen? Or would it be a kind of a dud in the bear market? Well, I mean, I certainly believe it'll pump. I, XRP is definitely the outlier here. I do believe that if the case ends, we will see a massive rise in the XRP price, probably a 2 to 3x very quickly. Um, why? Because all of a sudden people can trade it again. No, it's got to be coupled with being relisted to trade on on a Coinbase and, and other sites for United citizens, United States citizens to be able to buy and sell it. But uh, it will be short lived. Like the pump will be quick. But if we are in a bear market, 
it's not going to get to probably new all-time highs uh, just because of the cases. What will happen is once the market turns bullish, now all the work the Ripple Labs has been doing in the background, continuing to, to press forward with their business, coupled with the ability now for buyers to trade and sell it or to, to buy, sell, and trade uh, XRP very easily again, that will cause the, the explosion in the price as we move towards the new market. And I still believe XRP will end up being the, the, the major winner of all coins. The suppression from the last cycle, it's a rubber band, guys. You pull the rubber band, you keep pulling it, pulling it back. All of a sudden, you release a rubber band. You get the explosion. Ripple is the number one coin of the 2017 bull market. And I believe it will be of the next one. I thought if the case ended, it would be the last one, but it didn't happen. Uh, so in the next bull market, this certainly will be over. And that's what I expect. Okay. Uh, also, guys, uh, the black hole won again the fourth month for Pluto Alliance. We did choose. Uh, we put all the all of them back in. Next month, black hole will be removed again along with Uranus and Pluto. Uh, but two, t- two months a year, you get the chance, even if you already won, uh, won to win again. And the black holes won again. Y'all saw it. Totally random. Uh, so uh, thank you to all our Pluto Alliance holders. We love that community. That's all I got. Be blessed. Good boy out. Thank you.